Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. On today's episode, I'd like to talk about the cognitive benefits of ear training. This really comes from a resurgence of interest in one video I posted of my son Dylan writing out the notes of the chords that I'm playing. <laughs> Write them down. That's correct. D Now to be able to do this, not only do you have to be able to discern the notes of every chord, but you also have to know what register they're in in order to accurately notate it on the staff. That is one skill. There's another skill that he demonstrates in another video. What Dylan's doing in this video is he's doing an instant harmonic analysis of the chord voicing I'm playing. He says C augmented over D flat augmented. So. The voicing I played is this. He's saying C augmented over on top of D flat augmented. In order to do that, he needs to hear each chord independently. So he's hearing C, E, G sharp for C augmented and D flat F, A for D flat augmented. So his ear hears the chord, divides it in half because he hears the two independent voicings and he gives you the exact name of the chord. Now. This is a completely different skill because it involves music theory. You have to know what the notes of a C augmented chord are, C, E, G sharp, and a D flat augmented chord, D flat F, A, in order to be able to provide the analysis of what you've just heard. Now, if you read the comments, you'll see people saying everything from, oh, he's gonna be a great composer, or he's left-handed, of course he can do it, or this isn't perfect pitch. Dylan has perfect pitch, meaning he can identify any note uh, without a reference tone, and he can produce any note, meaning sing a note without a reference tone. But it goes far beyond that. When Dylan was a baby, I exposed him to what I call high information music. I've talked about this in other videos, but there's a lot of people that have never seen any of those videos before. When I say high information music, I mean music that is highly chromatic, that uses all 12 notes, that's tonal, but really unpredictable. And most of the music I played for him were pieces that were improvised by my friend Aiden Essen, who I think is the greatest improviser alive. Now I started doing the listening when Dylan was five months prenatal. I made up playlists. I played them 30 to 45 minutes a day. My wife put headphones on her stomach and I rotated the playlists out every 30 days. And then when Dylan was born, I would get up with him in the morning and I would play with him for an hour or two. What I'm doing in this clip is I'm engaging his social brain. There's a great TED talk by Patricia Cool, who is a professor of speech and hearing sciences at the University of Washington called The Linguistic Genius of Babies. During this critical two month period, so there are two things going on. The first is that the babies are listening intently to us and they're taking statistics on the language that they hear. And those distributions grow. And what we've learned is that babies are sensitive to the statistics. So this video came out actually three years after Dylan was born. I had already done the prenatal and the postnatal listening, but I discovered Dylan had perfect pitch. A flat, C, G, S sharp. And when I started looking at literature as to how perfect pitch develops, everything said, you have this critical window up until age six. After age six, you can't develop perfect pitch. But when I saw this Patricia Cool video, she starts using terms like citizens of the world. 
What she's talking about is that all babies are born with the algorithms to hear and decipher all the phonemes that are contained in the 6,500 languages that are spoken on Earth. Out of these 6,500 languages, there are 2,000 phonemes. Phonemes are the parts of syllables. In English, we use 44 phonemes. This video talks about a study that she did that discovered that beginning around nine months of age, babies begin to lose the ability to hear the sounds of all languages. For babies tested in Tokyo and in the United States, here in Seattle, as they listen to ra and la, sounds important to English, but not to Japanese. So at six to eight months, the babies are totally equivalent. Two months later, something incredible occurs. The babies in the United States are getting a lot better. The babies in Japan are getting a lot worse. And they become what she calls culturally bound listeners, meaning they can only hear the sounds of the languages spoken in their household. If there are three languages, they can hear those. If there's one language, they can only hear the sounds of that one language. So I said, well, I wonder, since the perfect pitch developmental period ends at about age six, and this expanded language development period ends around age six or seven, well, they must be connected. So then I started to wonder, well, maybe this early critical window that, that is open until about nine or 10 months is really the perfect pitch development window. But that's not the whole story. In addition to perfect pitch, I discovered that Dylan had an unusual memory. Hydrogen helium, this and blood boron, carbon nitrogen, so for an so magnesium, aluminum, so on, vascular, sulfur, corn, yarn, gum, and ascom, calcium, skin, 80 ugentillion, 658 ugentillion, 175 novenicillion, 170 octadicillion, 943 septendicillion. Name me the first hundred prime numbers. All right. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, 42, 47, 53, 59, 61, 67, 71, 73, 79, 83, 89, 97. 101, 103, 107, 109, 113, 127, 131, 137, 139, 149, 151, 157, 157. He also had an enhanced ability to learn languages. So in doing research for this video today, I found another talk that Patricia Cool did just last year, but this time about music in the brain. Check it out. I had a doctoral student who happened to be a concert pianist, Christina Zhao, very, very, very smart woman. And she said to me, what would happen if we exposed babies to music socially during that period? Her goal was to expose babies to 12 sessions in a randomized control trial in which half of the babies were randomly assigned to the musical group and half of the babies were in the control group. So babies experienced waltzes that represent that triple rhythm, that triple meter. It's a difficult meter for young children to master. When they got done with the 12 sessions, the kids in the music group and the control group came back and we put these little ones into our big machine. This is what a magnetoencephalography machine looks like. We wanted to give them an opportunity to listen to the rhythm of, of waltzes that they had not heard yet in their exposure sessions, but occasionally mistime the note. So the triple meter is supposed to go bump, 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 bump. But if you mistime that last note, those of you who know the waltz and expect the waltz, your brain would react to that change. The question is, are the kids in the music group uh, better, and then are they better just at music or more than that? We saw changes in two parts of the brain. Here's the sensory auditory cortex, and what you're seeing in dark blue is the babies in the music group and the green in the control group exactly 200 milliseconds after the missed time. And you can see this huge effect plotted over here, highly significant, showing that in that auditory area, the babies were better at music. Okay, so that's not surprising that they were better in music. The surprise is that we were also affecting prefrontal cortex, where attention and executive function and all those sort of higher level cognitive things go on. Then the speech condition gets interesting. If the babies have been trained about patterns generally, then maybe you should see an effect on speech. And indeed, that's what we saw. And again, we see a big difference between the blue and the green 
And similarly, in prefrontal cortex, we see a significant difference between the kids in the music group and the kids in the non-music group. Fairly simple experience, only 12 sessions. It's a, only about five hours of experience have a pretty profound effect, not only the, on that sensory system, but on the systems that pay attention to patterns. And we believe that there are very big implications of this. After the, we looked at all of the data, the babies who had been in the music group were significantly calmer. And in studies that we're doing now, we can see that the babies who have been through the music experience have greater abilities to attend to hold attention when that's important, and to switch attention when it's appropriate to switch. Now imagine, instead of kids listening over a few sessions to this, to the game. they listened for two years to this. Well, you don't have to imagine, you can see the results. I want you to listen to it and sing the notes. F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, D sharp, D, 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 D. That's correct. D, A, F sharp, C sharp, F. People in my dad's comment section are always saying, oh, Dylan can't enjoy music because he's always analyzing. But I don't analyze music when I'm in listening to it. I only analyze when my dad asked me to. Also, people always ask me if it drives me crazy to hear out of two notes, but it doesn't. I play in a fifth grade band, for example. I play the oboe, and there's a lot of out of pitch notes that are being played, and it doesn't bother me. If you're wondering whether I did this with my daughters as well, all you have to do is watch this channel. I've had them in many videos. Too. Now imagine a world where people have the advantages that I've been able to have through my musical education, where kids are brought up with this kind of training and experience. Imagine what they would be capable of. It's not just kids. Adults can change their brain through ear training as well, dramatically, really dramatically. I'm going to address this more in future episodes. Until then, please subscribe here. Hit the like button. If you're interested in my Beato book, you can go to my website at www.rickbeato.com or you can sign up for the Beato Club as another way to support this channel. Thanks so much for watching.